Hey, we're going to show you a new kind of technology. I guess you could call it a new kind of lie detector test, but it's far more sophisticated than that. And it uses brain waves instead of physical cues like pulse and breathing rate. And it's now become admissible in some courts in the country. It really is, as I said, absolutely revolutionary technology. And ABC's Bob Woodruff is here uh, to tell us how this works, Bob. And it's very new to a lot of us, Charlie. The technology called brain fingerprinting is partly responsible for freeing a man convicted of murder from an Iowa prison after 25 four years and it may be part of an appeal for a convict on Oklahoma's death row whose case will be heard by the US Supreme Court any day now how often have we heard these words from law enforcement officials these are details known only to the perpetrators the latest technology in forensic science uses those details to prove a suspect's guilt or innocence. Developed by Harvard-trained Dr. Lawrence Farwell, brain fingerprinting uses brain waves to measure what Dr. Farwell calls the aha of recognition. When the brain recognizes a word or picture, it releases an involuntary wave called a P300 murmur. It's now being used to determine whether suspects were ever at the scene of the crime. If the person knows the specific details about the crime, he gets a recognition response, which we can measure in the brain waves when those correct details about the crime are flashed on the screen. According to Farwell and his brainwave results, Terry Harrington didn't have the details of the 1978 murder he was convicted of stored in his brain. An Iowa judge allowed the new technology into evidence in Harrington's appeal, and now he's a free man. In Missouri, J.P. Grinder confessed and was sentenced to life after a P-300 murmur revealed he did have special knowledge of the 1984 rape murder of which he was accused. Now, Farwell science could save the life of Jimmy Ray Slaughter on Oklahoma's death row for the murder of his ex-girlfriend and their infant daughter. Farwell tested Slaughter on details Slaughter claimed he didn't know. The room where the adult victim's body was located, the position on the floor where the adult victim's body was lying. When Farwell questioned Slaughter on the location of the bodies at the murder scene and the position of the woman's body on the floor, there was no brainwave of recognition. We have at least a 99% confidence that you don't have that information in your brain. So what does that mean to you? It means that what I've said all along is true. What would you say all along? That I was innocent. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Now, it's interesting. The test may come too late for Slaughter's Supreme Court appeal, but the defense is hoping to use it to reopen the case in Oklahoma. And we are joined this morning by neuroscientist and inventor of brain fingerprinting, Dr. Larry Farwell. Good to have you with us. Good to be here. Now, this is, I, I, I want to get some image of how this works. W when they do lie detector tests, mm -hmm. they react to sweat on the palms, to heartbeat, to pulse, etc. But really what you're doing is going back to the origin of all those things, which is the brain waves. Right. We measure information in the brain. We don't measure whether they're anxious or not, whether they're lying or not. We simply measure a brain response that tells us if that information that we're flashing in the screen is something they recognize as significant. So we can know if they know those details about the crime. This, this is so new that if you introduce it in a, in a court case, don't you really, in effect, have to educate the judge as to what it is? Yes, we do have to educate the judge, and of course that's what we do. We were successful in, in the state of Iowa in the Harrington case in uh, achieving admissibility for brain right. fingerprinting. Have some judges say, don't bother me with this, I don't understand it? Not yet. No. I, I think we'll continue to be successful because the science is very solid. I think everyone acknowledges the science is very solid behind the technique. So if you showed me, for instance, if I was strapped up to this thing, okay. and you showed me a picture of three people, and I knew one of them, right? and you didn't know which one of the three I knew, mm -hmm. you'd be able to tell right away which one I knew? Yes, absolutely. Because I would, I would have some sort of a brainwave reaction, this P300, what did he say? Right, P300 murmur response. When you see something that's significant, that you recognize as significant, the brain goes, aha, and we can pick up a pattern on, from the brain that we analyze with a computer and we say, yes, he recognizes that, or no, he doesn't. All right, is there some way that the test might be invalidated? For instance, let's say somebody, when they committed a crime, was on drugs mm -hmm. and, and therefore doesn't remember mm -hmm. uh, or has no remembrance of where he was at the time. Mm -hmm. So he wouldn't necessarily react to the position of the bodies of the room or whatever. Well, James B. Grinder turned out to be a serial killer. He was on drugs and alcohol at the time of the crime. He was actually on uh, therapeutic drugs, psychotropic drugs, at the time of the brain fingerprinting test. We got very good results from him. I mean, people remember the very major 
events in their life. Even a serial killer only does it a few times and it's a big event. So that, that uh, tends to have a very solid record in the brain. We can detect that. Could you also use it to determine, because there's a lot of controversy, for instance, about people who have repressed memory about child abuse. Yeah. Could you use it to determine whether or not they had actually been abused? We could use it, but the way we would use it is not on the, the victim or alleged victim. We would use it on the suspect. We'd get all the details about the alleged crime from the person who believed they'd uh, been abused. And then do it on the alleged abuser. Right, and we'd see if he had a, that record stored in his brain or not. We could detect that. Hmm. How widely, how many applications of this, how long have you been doing research on it? How, many, how widely have you, have you tried to use it? Well, I invented it uh, more than 15 years ago. And I actually withheld the technology from the public for, for 15 years to do more research. We did research with the FBI, the CIA, the, the U.S. Navy. The government spent over a, a million dollars on the research on brain fingerprinting. We showed not only in the laboratory, but in over 100 actual real-life situations that the technology was effective, and we have yet to uh, ever get a wrong answer. It's been correct in every case so far. All right. Well, very interesting to have you with us, and we, I'd, I'd love to try this out. Can we do this sometime and do a demonstration on the air? Sure, we can do that. All right. Okay, we'll get you back and we will do that. Appreciate it. Good to have you with us.